Hello, this video is the first in our series about the concept of nomenclature in chemistry. Nomenclature is of course a fancy word that just means naming stuff. In this video, we're going to learn how to name and write the chemical formula of simple ionic compounds. Let's start with a quick recap on ionic compounds. As the name suggests, ionic compounds are formed between a cation, or positively charged ion, and an anion, or a negatively charged ion. You might have noticed from our discussion of ions in class that metals tend to form cations and nonmetals tend to form anions. We use this information of metals and nonmetals to decide how to name a compound. Compounds that we'll be naming in this video are binary compounds, which means there are only two types of elements present. And in this case, that means there'll be a nonmetal and a metal that form these ionic compounds. In today's lesson, not only will we be naming compounds, but we'll also be writing chemical formula for compounds. Chemical formulas show us which elements are present in a compound, as well as their relative proportions to each other. So for example, NaCl shows this that sodium and chlorine are present in that compound in a one-to-one -one ratio. And Fe2O3 shows us that iron and oxygen are present in that compound in a two to three ratio. When we're presented with the chemical formula of an ionic compound, there is one question we should ask ourselves before we name it. Does this metal always form an ion with the same charge? What I mean by that is, we would answer yes to this question if the metal in our compound is an alkali metal that forms a plus one charged ion, an alkaline earth metal that forms a plus two charged ion. Likewise, aluminum and gallium always form plus three ions. And while we typically think of transition metals forming more than one charged ion, Silver and zinc are exceptions to that rule and would also fall into our only one charge category. We would answer no to this question if the metal was any other transition metal or if it were a metal like tin or lead, which aren't transition metals but do form more than one charged ion. If we're dealing with a metal that's under the yes category, then our naming rules are very simple. All we have to do is name the metal and then name the anion. So for example, if I see a compound with the formula LiCl, I know that lithium only forms a plus one charge. So I'm just gonna name that metal lithium. And then I name a Cl, the anion, which is chloride. Notice the name change from chlorine to chloride to designate that it's an anion. In another example, if I had BaF2, again, I would name the metal barium, and then I would name the anion fluoride. Again, an ending change from fluorine to fluoride. Take a moment and do some practice on your own. Pause the video and name this compound. Okay, so to name this compound, I'm gonna name the metal Na, the sodium, and then I'm gonna name the anion S, which is sulfide, sodium sulfide. So what if we wanted to write the chemical formula of an ionic compound from its name? Well, to write the formula of a binary ionic compound, first, we write the symbol of the cation, then we write the symbol of the anion. In order to balance the charges, we're going to use subscripts in the formula so that the total charge of that compound is zero. Let's deconstruct two earlier examples from the video. So first, we have lithium chloride. To write the formula, I would write the symbol and charge of lithium, and then the symbol and charge for chloride, now I need to make sure the positive and negative charges of the ions cancel each other out. Since these charges are plus one and minus one, the compound has a neutral charge. Let's write the formula for barium fluoride. 
first, all right, the symbol in charge of barium, then the symbol in charge of fluoride. In this case, our charges do not cancel each other out, so we need to add subscripts to our formula. Here's a shortcut, call it the crisscross method. In this method, the charge of the cation becomes the subscript of the anion and vice versa. The formula is correct because the overall charge of the formula is zero, and we express those subscripts in the lowest whole number ratio. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and write the chemical formula for this compound. Okay, so first I'm gonna write the symbol and charge of magnesium, and then the symbol and charge iodide. These charges do not cancel out, I'm going to use the crisscross method in order to write my chemical formula. When I do that, I can see that my chemical formula is MgI2. If you want more information, check out sections 9.1 and 9.2 in your textbook. Watch the other videos in our nomenclature series.